at the junkyard pulling another motor. I want to show you a few things to look for if you are pulling one from the junkyard. So here's an example of call it engine number one. If you take a look at it, it's kind of got a lot of rust on it. Uh, vehicle's a little more beat up. Rusty vehicle. There's no visible accident damage. A little bit on the bumper, but that just might be from a wrecker. So likely this is here because it's got engine or transmission problems. Also, it's about 2001 or two. And down in there, it's got the little small head bolts I've showed you before. And it's drive by cable, that means it's 2002 or older. So comparing it to this one next door, which is the one I'm pulling out. So this was in an accident. Quarter panel smashed over here. Nothing in the engine bay was hurt. Front damage hit something. So this engine's a lot cleaner. It's also a 2006, which has the large head bolts, which means it's got the Gen 4 rods. So I'm pulling this one out and I'm waiting on the forklift guy to come forklift it for me. So the one last thing I'm gonna do, somebody pulled the coil packs off this engine. So I'm gonna come next door while I'm waiting. And this one has the round coil packs with the heat sink. So I'm gonna pull these brackets off, swap into the other engine. And then we'll get this thing loaded up in the truck. Got the engine back to the back cave. Show you some areas I was looking at in the junkyard that are easier to show you now. Kind of tells you the history of the motor a little bit. So down here is your front cover seal. So I always check in there to see if it's leaking oil. That just means it's worn out, usually higher miles. Not a guarantee, but gives you a general override, overall idea of how the engine is. Same with the back here. I always check this back seal here on this plate. And it's pretty dry up in here. It's nothing really, just a little bit. Maybe on the oil pan gasket area, which I'm going to replace anyways. That was a good idea. Always check around your heads for any kind of leaks. Uh, back here is always going to be some oil. Oil sensor and the cam sensor usually leak a little bit, so don't be surprised by this. There's two types of fuel rails that came on the trucks. So there's the returnless, which is this one, and there's the return, which has two lines going to it. Uh, with the returnless like this, you pretty much always have to use the Corvette style uh, filter pressure regulator or something similar that can bypass the pressure back to the tank without using the rail. The advantage to the returnless is you only got to run one line from the Corvette filter up to this. The disadvantage is if it's a high horsepower application and you're going to sit still for a while, your fuel is going to heat up in your rails and in your lines. With the return style, you have a constant flow going back to the tank, so it helps keep it a little bit cooler. I, I like the returnless, so that's usually what I grab if there's one available. Of course, we got our number seven exhaust bolt broken back here, like all of them. But that's the only one broke, so that's not too bad. I'm sure one more will snap off when I'm removing them. Something you can also upgrade for cheap if you're picking one of these up in the junkyard is the alternator. I don't have one to show you, but there's a higher output alternator that says DR44 right there. And it's a little bit bigger, uses a slightly longer belt, but junkyard charges the same, so you can swap that out if there's one around. Overall, the engine was pretty clean, so I was pretty confident in it. Spun it around a few times, just turning the crank. Uh, so I've got the valve cover loosened, and we're going to pop this off. And we're going to take a look at the underneath and kind of see what we're looking at. Hopefully we don't have a ton of crustiness under there. This is also something you can check at the junkyard. You can pop the cover off. You just got to remove the coil pack and then unbolt it. And that looks pretty good. My guess was this was a lower miles engine. When I say lower, I mean like less than 200,000. So that's a real clean head in there. Sometimes you'll see gunk all built up in here. That's just a sign that someone didn't do their oil changes. And underneath the valve cover, looks pretty good. We'll go grab a really dirty one and show you the difference. So here's one off a higher mileage engine that was a little bit more neglected. You see this crusty carbon buildup everywhere? You'll have similar to that all built up in the head here. But it just looks like black pudding all in your head. 
you can pop that out for the junkyard, like I said, and keep an eye out for it. I just wanted to clarify real quick. The reason I mentioned I looked for a vehicle that had damage from an accident is that generally means that it was moving when it got junked, which means the engine probably ran and didn't have any major mechanical issues. The second fuel thing to look out for is the injector type. So on the left here, this is a flex fuel injector, and on the right is the standard non-flex fuel injector. So this is a L59 engine, and this is an LM7. And they have different flow rates and different heights. And the reason that height is important is if you're gonna use aftermarket injectors, you wanna make sure you get the correct fuel rail. The fuel rail height, there's two types, and the rail itself is the same, except the distance from this bolt flange to where the injector goes in is a shorter distance for the taller injector which is the flex fuel L59. So that's what you want to keep an eye out for. If you're looking for one specific type, most are going to be the non-flex LM7s. And there's the part number on there. There are a couple different part numbers, but this is the most common one. And here's the part number on the flex injector. And they'll all say Denso on them, unless they're a Chinese replacement, which you don't want. And then all the non-flex are Delphi's which is written right there. So that's two good ways to identify which one you've got if you can't really tell from the height difference. They also use different plugs. Flex is larger, non-flex is smaller, but they're pretty easy to tell apart once you've looked at them a couple times. So that's the only other thing to watch for if you're looking for a specific type for the fuel rail. Next thing to look for when you're pulling one of these in the junkyard is the throttle body type. You can switch all these between the Gen 3 engines, but if you're getting the drive-by wire, it's a good idea to also grab your attack module and gas pedal. I covered the different versions of these in a different video, all the different types, so they just got to match with the computer and the throttle body and everything you're using. If you want to go drive-by cable, it's easy enough just to unbolt this. It's three bolts here, there, and there. Pull off that little uh, crossover. And you can swap that for a drive-by cable in the junkyard and not have to pay anything extra. So that's about it for what to look for when you're pulling one of these. And i got to order some parts, some new gaskets and seals. And then I'll get this guy tore apart and move on to the next project with it.